May the holy names of Jesus and Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, at the start of this new year, we still are in this period, this beautiful period, to adore the infant Jesus with the three wise men in the Epiphany. This is a blessed and a memorable occasion for us on which the mercy of the Redeemer called us in the person of the Magi, from the darkness of unbelief to the knowledge of the true faith. This is according to the Oriental custom, which presents gifts to great princes. They brought Jesus Christ the richest products of their country, an offering namely of gold, as we know, frankincense and myrrh. And through these gifts, they gave expression of the idea of the Redeemer by recognizing his divinity, his boundless dominion over us and his humanity, his divinity by the frankincense, which belongs to God alone, his humanity by the myrrh, which is used for the embalming of bodies as we know, and his sovereignty by the gold, which was the ordinary tribute paid to a sovereign. We know also that this word, epiphany, Epiphania means manifestation, the feast where God, the child Jesus, reveals himself as the Lord. Behold, the Magi came from the east. The Magi came at the dawn of the day to worship and acknowledge the Messiah in our name as their God and Redeemer. They are our then, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our forefathers and our models in faith. You know their names, Balthazar, Gaspar, and Melchior. You have heard their names according to the legend, the three wise men, the Persians, or the kings traveling by camel across the desert sands to Bethlehem in pursuit of this wonderful star. A cavalcade of camels brought the three kings asking this question, where is he that is born king of the Jews? God has been manifested. We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Since we know they were not Jews, they can be considered to be the first Gentiles to receive the call of salvation, of redemption from our Lord Jesus Christ. What about the, this figure in the scripture we read in the Gospel of Herod? Herod was then afraid of this star. He had a persecution complex where everyone he saw as rivals to his throne, including this little babe in the manger. According to the tradition of the Jewish historian Flavius Josephus, who wrote towards the end of the first century, he said that Herod was notorious for his cruelty. He killed over half of his ten wives. Repeat, he killed over half of his ten wives, some of his children and many people of good standing. Harry tried to find out about the whereabouts of the child to dispose of him, but this was not according to God's plan for him to carry out his mission. What can we learn today then about this wonderful time of the Epiphany? The Jews we know had made known throughout the East the hope of the Messiah. These learned and wise men then knew about the expected Messiah the king of the Jews. According to the ideas accepted at the time, the Messiah would have a star connected with his birth. God made use of these ideas to draw then the Gentiles to Christ, who would adore him and be converted. God called them then by a familiar sign, the star in the midst of their occupations, as he calls us today by familiar signs. We must then recognize the star not as an external sign, but the star as a light and a guide in the sky of our own soul. When we decide for God then and are living in a state of sanctifying grace, we notice the light shining in our own soul and growing increasingly brighter. This is when we can see more of the darkness when we are in the light. In the star and light we are able to see the root cause of our sinful habits. The star then is the desire to live a full Christian life and to take God seriously. 
Sometimes in our life, we lose this star just as the wise men lost sight in Jerusalem. What should we do then when we lose sight? We simply follow the example of the wise men and ask Jesus Christ for help and guidance in the Blessed Virgin Mary. We have no need to go to the wise men or herds, the herds of this world. Christ has given us the church, his church, sureness of, sureness of doctrine and a flow of grace in the sacraments. He has arranged things so that there will always be people to guide and lead us constantly on our way. But we must persevere as the wise men in search of the Savior. We need to ask then this wisdom, the Blessed Virgin Mary, for the grace of perseverance to keep the star of faith and grace burning. Not only do we need to pray for conversions, but sometimes we neglect to pray for those with the light of the star and their perseverance. How can we persevere then? Simply put, in order to be, avoid being suffocated by the world, as Jesus tells us in the parable of the sower, we, may, we must pray continually. This is what we do, we must water our soul. You have your flesh, you eat three or four times a day, most people, but what do you do to your soul? If you do not pray each and every day, surely your soul will shrivel up and die. Many have asked throughout the centuries of human history, how is it possible that only three men Three wise men came to adore the child in the manger. What ingratitude of the rest of humanity. All Jesus Christ did was to engender spiritual stars, one more beautiful than the other, to beckon souls to know their creator. Some to sanctity, others to rise from the fall in sin, and others to heroic sacrifice. Do you know, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, what these spiritual stars are? A star is a sorrowful encounter, endured for the love of God, or a divine truth well received. A star is having one love rejected, or enduring a setback out of love for God. A star is a disappointment or a dejection, lovingly endured, or even a blessing in disguise. These are the many stars that shed light in the minds of the faithful. These stars dispose souls to seek out the heavenly infant, Jesus, who is eagerly awaiting their love as he shivers with cold while seeking refuge in their hearts. So as to be known and loved, remember the child is always knocking on your heart, we read in the book of Revelation. But the last Mary, who holds Jesus in her arms, waits in vain for these stars to dispose the souls of her children to come to her whereby she may deposit Jesus Christ in their hearts. So consider well, keep the light of faith burning, the star in your soul with the gift of prayer. Let us remain in adoration of the child and keep this star burning in our hearts. Who is the model then to imitate for perseverance and prayer? Is it not the personification of prayer and perseverance itself, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Remember well that she is the daughter of the Eternal Father, the mother of the Eternal Word, and the spouse of the Holy Spirit. As spouse, she penetrates our souls and controls its faculties when we give ourselves to her in consecration. She is the one who manages the affairs of our interior life and souls as our mother, and who keeps the torch alight and the star of faith. We pray to her for this grace today, and also, if you don't know, way back in 1894, which is uh, 126 years ago, 127 years ago, we have the birth of a great Marian saint. We celebrate today his anniversary of his birth, the champion of the Immaculate. The great Saint Maximilian Kobe was born. We ask for him's intercession today on his birthday to keep the light of faith burning as he did all of his life. His step forward in the bunker in the death camp of Auschwitz was not a spontaneous act. This was a, 
the result of all of these stars of faith accumulating in his life. Our Lady is the morning star who will guide us to the eternal part, part of paradise. Let us there remain in adoration of the child who in order to save us humbled himself to such a degree of poverty as to take our flesh. Let us offer him not only incense, incense as gold, gold as our king, or myrrh as one who has to be anointed and sought death for our sake, but spiritual gifts through Our Lady this year of 2021, so that one day, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we will take possession of the true star, Jesus Christ in paradise, and adore him forever and ever and ever. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.